Action. Hello world. We're going to solve a system of three linear equations and three variables using the Gauss-Jordan row elimination method. Okay, so there are at most nine steps to do. Remember the end goal, the end goal, maybe it'll be down here, is to get as close as possible to something that looks like uh, this following diagonal matrix. Then a number here, some number here, and some number here. That is the goal if the three planes meet and give a unique solution, meaning they meet at one single point. It will not always look like this, but for this particular problem, we, we know it's going to look like that. So that's the goal. There's nine steps. Step one, step two, step three. Step four, step five, step six. Step seven, step eight, step nine. So let's do step one. There's only two rules that we have to get a one. There's only one rule to get a one and one rule to get a zero. We want to make a three into a one. Well, actually, first we have to start with the augmented matrix. The first matrix is the following. Three, negative six, positive nine, zero. Four, negative six, positive eight, negative four. Negative two, negative one, one, seven. So we want to make that into a one. So to make that into a one, we take the reciprocal of three. So one third times row one to get a new row one. So we can do this in our head, which is dangerous, or we can do it on scratch work. But rows two and three stay the same. So we'll just write row two and row three, because they don't change. And this row, negative two, negative one, one, seven. Sorry my back is to you a lot, but this is mostly work on the board. Okay, so one third times three is one. So the new row, I'll put in blue, is one. One third times negative six is negative two. One third times nine is three. And one third times zero is zero. So we've completed step one of nine really long steps. All right. So next step is to get a zero over here. So the opposite of four is negative four. So we do negative four times row one, add it to row two to get a new row two. So if we do that, if we do that, then rows one and rows three stay the same. So let's just write that. Rows one and row three. this in our head or we can but we have to be very careful that we don't make a mistake negative four times one is negative four add it to positive four we get zero negative four times negative two is positive eight add positive eight to negative six and we get, you know what i'm going to do i'm going to do scratch work because i really feel like i want you to do scratch work also um, So negative four times this is negative four, positive eight, um, negative 12, and zero. That's negative four times row one. Negative four times row one. This might take a little longer in the video because I'm gonna show all the steps. Um, but, but I think this is a good thing for you all to do. This is our row two. If I add these things, I get zero, two, negative four, negative four. So zero, two, negative four, negative four. That's how we show our work. I won't show our work for all the other ones, but this is the process of what you try to do in your head or do in scratch work, you know? Okay, so another matrix is not gonna fit here, so I'm gonna scoop, scoop around, um, scoop around and go, I wanna make that into a zero. So to make this negative two into zero, I need to multiply the row that has the one by the opposite of two, negative two, which is positive two. So positive two times row one, add it to row two, three, to get a new row three. So rows one and rows two stay the same. 
So I'm just gonna rewrite them. So there's one in row two from there. So let's go over here and see if we can do this in our head. Two times one is two, added to negative two is zero. Two times negative two is negative four, add negative four to negative one is negative five. Two times three is six, add six to one is seven. And two times zero is zero, and the seven is still seven. Okay, so we have six more steps to do. Yes, these are long, <laughs> but they're doable. Um, so I wanna make a, step four is to make a one here. To make that into a one, I multiply the whole row by the reciprocal of two. And the reciprocal of two is a half. So it's half times row two to make a new row two. So since rows one and three stay the same, let's just write them off the bat. So half of row two, or I can think divide this row by two. That's the same thing. Zero divided by two is zero. Two divided by two is one. Negative four divided by two is negative two, and negative four divided by two is negative two. Oh, yippee! We have a one. That's good. I'm just excited because we're like, we're almost there. So now I have to make a zero here and then here. In our class, we're doing it in that order so that we can have some sort of order in the universe. Okay, so to make that negative five a positive five, I have to add five to that. So it's a question of five times the row that has the one in the column that you want to make a zero. So five times row two, not, not row one, but five times row two, added to row three, hi Beth, hi. to get a new row three. Hey Beth, yeah. can you come over here for a second? Mm -hmm. This is, we're just recording this so that people can know how to do this. This is Beth. Hi. Hi, Beck. Hi, world. That's what's going to be on the internet. Wow. And years from now, people will say, why are they wearing masks? It's because we smell really bad. <laughs> we don't want to smell each other. This has nothing to do with coronavirus. That thing from, what, 2021? Ooh. <laughs> okay. 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 So, enough of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, let's see. Five times row two. So, row one and row two stay the same. So, let's just write them. Again, one, negative two, three, zero, and row two stays the same. Zero, one, negative two, negative two. And now let's see, can we do this in our head? Five times this added to the bottom. I think we can. Again, I don't suggest you do this in your head. You would literally write what five times that is, and then add it to that. If you want to show scratch work. Are you going somewhere? Yeah, I'm here right now. You're here though, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just in the room over. Why? Because it bothered me. Oh, we'll be done soon. Okay. Five times that is zero. Added to zero is still zero. Five times one is five. Added to negative five is zero, as desired. That's what we wanted there. Five times negative two is negative 10. Negative 10 plus seven is negative three. Five times negative two is negative 10. Added to seven, still negative three. Cool. Next step, get a zero here. I think it could fit underneath here if I do some good spacing. If I just make the matrices smaller. Is that a bad idea, you think? No, that's fine. Uh, I think I'll fit here if I just make them smaller. Because we only have three more steps, and I think it'd be, it could all end here. Uh, okay, so I need to make a zero right here. So the opposite of negative two is positive two, the opposite sign. So I'm going to multiply the row that has the 1 by positive 2. So 2 times row 2 added to row uh, 1 to create a new row 1. So we do that. 
Rows two and row three don't change. So let's write what those bottom rows are. Those bottom rows from over there are zero, zero, negative three, negative three, and zero, one, negative two, negative two. So let's do the math here carefully. Two times zero is zero. Add it to one, it's just one. Zero is like. Two times one is neg is two. Add it to negative two, it gets zero. Yay! That's what we wanted. There. Two times negative two is negative four. I add negative four to three, I get negative one. Two times negative two is negative four. Add it to zero is negative four. Okay. Okay, so step seven, these columns are done. Step seven is to make the one down here. How do I make a one down here? Multiply by the reciprocal or think about dividing by negative three. Same thing. So multiplying by the reciprocal is saying that we're going to take negative one third times the bottom row to make a new bottom row. So the top rows say the same. The top two rows, rows one and two, say the same. So let's just write what they are. Zero, one, negative two. Negative two. Now let's do the math over here. I'm dividing all four of these numbers by negative three or multiplying it by negative one third, however you want to see that. So we see that we're going to get negative one third times this zero is just zero. Negative one third times this zero is just zero. Negative one third times that negative three is a positive one. Yay, that's what we wanted. And negative one third times this negative three is positive one. Okay. So, so far we have one of our answers. Z equals one, but that's looking ahead. Okay, there's two more steps to do. Oh gosh darn it, they're not gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay, we can move the camera. I want to make that a zero, right? So the opposite of two is, negative two is positive two. So I'm gonna take the opposite sign thing of this, multiply it by the row that has the one. So two times row three, add it to row two to get a new row two. So rows one and rows three stay the same. There's one in rows three, so let's just write what, what where one and row three is, just to get that out of the way. Okay, so let's see if we can do this in our head. Two times zero is zero, added to one is one. Two times zero is zero, added to one is one is Wait, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm on crack. Sorry. You know. <laughs> two times zero is zero, add zero is zero. Two times zero is zero, add to one is one. Remember, if something changes here after you've gotten, after this part here, nothing should change in future steps. That means you did something wrong if something changes. Like even right here, after this step, if this ever in the future changes from one zero to zero, you did something wrong. And that's how I knew I did something wrong. I had a one there. Something wrong. Okay. So, two times one is two, add to negative two is zero. And two times one is two, add to negative two is zero. Okay. Now, lastly, we just need to make that a zero. And thirdly, I need to go move this to the other up here. Are we good? Okay. I want to make, how, how much of this can you still see? Uh, up until half R2. So yeah. Okay, 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 this is good. That's, I mean, you don't need to see all that, so. Okay, so I need to make this into a zero. 
So the opposite of that is positive one. The opposite sign saying it's negative one is positive one. So I'm going to multiply one times the bottom row, one times the bottom row, add it to top row to get a new top row. So row one stays the same and merge the rows. Sorry, no, row one is changing. So row two and three stay the same. So let's just write what they are. Um, zero, zero, one, one, and then zero, one, zero, zero. Okay, grand finale. This is what you paid top dollar to get this video for. Okay, one times row three added to row one to get a new row one. One times zero is zero, added to one is one. One times zero is zero, added to zero is zero. One times one is one, added to negative one, zero. One times one is one, added to negative four is negative three. Mm -hmm. Negative three. So we're done. We translate this back to math. And then in math speak, this means x plus zero y plus zero z equals negative three, y equals zero, and z equals one. So the answer is negative three zero one is the coordinate for three planes by those things that is far away that the equations meet. This is our final answer. That's where the planes meet. So visually what's happening? Well we have a plane and another plane. Then a third plane. Oh, I'm, there's no way I can do this. I'm going to butcher the picture. But the third, <laughs> the third plane happens. And where all these things meet is maybe one single point that's on this plane, on this plane, and on this plane. And that point is three, zero, one. Actually, I don't think I did a better job with that visualization. Um, so that's how you do these problems when they meet at a single point. If there's infinitely many solutions or no solutions, then you finish a lot earlier. You're going to get a row of zeros. If you get a row of zeros in the bottom, that's infinitely many solutions. If you get uh, almost a row of zeros, like three zeros and then a five, for instance, that says zero equals five, that's no solution. So in some sense, it's easier to do problems when they don't meet at one point because there's less steps to do. Um, you're, you're going to stop basically at step number seven when you get like, like after this step seven is where it stops. If you have a zero here, you're, you're done. You stop working. Okay, that's it. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate you loving mathematics as much as I know you love mathematics.